Hey guys, Jeffrey here. I'm a Canadian wildlife photographer um, based in Masai Mara, Kenya. I haven't left here for past, I don't know, 20 months. So um, first I like to express my appreciation and gratitude to Mr. Guo Xiaoma from Nikon China, the marketing director, Mr. Yue Yue Xing from Shanghai Camera Equipment Corp. And thank to Raji, Jimmy, they hand delivered the Z9 from China after being not cleared by the costume. So find somebody uh, actually take this camera from China, fly to Kenya, hand deliver it to me. So first, very big thank you to all those people made the effort to make this review come true. And this review is also in part sponsored by Lorian Camp of Masamara is where I am right now. Today is February 7, 2022. This review will be consist of a few videos and also the articles which I will publish very soon. Um, however, um, I think before we talk about anything else, um, I'd like to talk about the Z9 high ISO image quality performance. Why I have to talk now because recently in the photographic forum I have seen people express their concerns about Adobe Camera Raw that the profile of Z9 is not final version but is a preliminary version. Many of uh, them suggested should use Nikon NX Studio to decoding the raw file instead of ACR. So today we're gonna use one of the images just for the sake of comparison we're gonna do one of the uh, real images that I took two days ago um, in a gray damp early morning before sunrise I shot an ISO 25,600 images. Let's see whether this image is number one which software process it better Number two, is Z9's high ISO image quality suffice enough to make a fine art print? So first, we open this original file, uh, which is here, with two different uh, original decoding systems, ACR and Nikon NX Studio. I already put it in the uh, tabletop, so let's just get to it. Let's open with ACR first. As you can see, this image was shot at ISO 25600 because that was before sunrise when the lines were working toward our vehicles. And I shot at one thousandth of a second because it was working. And f5.6, that's my maximum uh, aperture value. We don't do any um, adjustment. Um, just open it. Just use the basic decoding. Uh, default set and open this image because all the adjustment even you adjust it in ACR is started with this basic uh, default decoding so we save this image without doing any adjustment save as uncompressed TIFF file so I will add uh, ACR on the file name just to differentiate the two TIFF so we save it and close Photoshop. Now we use Nikon NX Studio open this image. Again, we don't do any adjustment. You can see here uh, recorded value, white balance recorded va original value, exposure composition original value, and also here on the uh, adjust details we do noise reduction we don't do still use the original value the sharpness adjustment also original value so we just without doing any adjustment we export into a non-compressed TIFF file so export and then we close this software now we have two files, uh, TIFF files, so we open them both in Photoshop to do a comparison. 
as you all know that raw file is not a two-dimensional file as JPEG or TIFF. It is a, a multi-dimensional data cube. So you cannot actually really see this data cube as an image. You have to use a decoder. Um, as people uh, previously point out, because up to today, February 7, the Adobe Camera Raw Z9 profile is still preliminary. So many people think we should use the Nikon uh, NX Studio as a, its Nikon own um, decoding, uh, raw decoding software. Uh, without doing any adjustment, we doing a comparison. So first we put these two images side by side. I can close this uh, toolbar. And then we zoom in into, let's say 200% to see the detail. Now 100% first, so 100%. This one 100%. And then we pull the same image area, which is the left eye of this line. The one on the left is Nikon NX Studio decoding. Um, the one on the right is ACR. Uh, well, we can zoom in a little bit more. Let's close this. Let's zoom in to 200%. Same with here, 100%. Put them side by side, you can see the ACR on the right, um, you don't see any color in it. Um, you don't see any color noises because the ACR has the building um, color noise reduction of 25, which is pretty awesome, I find out. Uh, let's open this image again in the ACR. Here, if we go to detail, you see the ACR have a building default value of 40 on the sharpening. Noise reduction, which is the luminous noise reduction, zero, but the color noise reduction have a building 25 value. I don't know what that referring to, but I find this value, this default value is pretty awesome because you see all the details, but without the color noise. Let's see if we turn off this one to zero, what's gonna happen? you see lots of color noise, right? So let's back to the uh, 25, which is its default setting. No, we, we don't need this. So that's the two previous. So let's see on the Nikon NX decoding um, image. We can see besides lots of color noise here, um, and also at 200%, even we, let's zoom in to 300%. This one too, 300%. At 300%, you can see on the pixel level. On ACR on the right, you can see the whole image is consistent with different pixels. So the edge of the iris of the line is all defined, very well defined by every individual crisp pixels, basic pixels. But on the NX, decoded image. You can see patches here. That's some color patches. You don't see very defined edge here. I cannot even see the basic pixel. Let's zoom in a little bit. Now we can see the pixel, but the pixel's edge is very mushy. So in here at 400%, let's back to 300%. Instead of in the same area here, the ACR use pixel one by one to define the edge, but here it's a patch, it's a color patch, it's kind of matchy. So at 300%, you can see the edge of the iris in the NX decoded image. It's not as crisp as many texture as uh, ACR decoded. Okay, now remember so far, we just use the default decoding um, performance for two software. Uh, which already you see the differences. Remember, these are the images that we never did any adjustment. So let's do a simple adjustment of denoise. I'm using the Topaz denoise AI uh, because AI software definitely is our future. First, we do the ACR images. 
same we zoom in 100 percent here there are four ai model on denoise i said this uh, there are four ai model of denoise i select the severe noise the reason is obvious so i will do always do an auto first and then we do adjustment based on the preview now look at this green bar green so this preview bar is green so that means right now you are seeing the before and after image so in the after image you can see all the noises in comparison to the before image full of the noises at iso 25600 we have no noise in the part especially in the dark part and you already can see the vehicle profile in the lion's iris because lion was walking toward our vehicles i photographed this image from five meters away so in lion's eye you can see the reflection of our vehicle and also the sky you already can see the vehicles outline the window here and you actually can see a very very uh, vaguely uh, that's a human that was me was shooting toward her so to me um i still felt this image a little bit soft around the eyes so i will do but very carefully to reduce the level of remove noise because the software is analyze the whole image but for me i will concentrate it on the eye for the image quality so a little bit soft so i will bring down the remove noise level let's do around half 22. it, it will give a new preview yeah the preview getting green now you can see the uh, image quality already being improved you can see the outline of the vehicle window here and and the top but be very careful when you reduce or remove noise um, slide you have to check and recheck the black part of the image make sure because black part will contain the most of the uh, noises the noise the, the image is still very clean and i will enhance the sharpness to improve the clarity and image quality a little bit more by pulling let's see let's do uh, around 60. so you give another preview okay now i'm very happy with the detail in the areas of the line the the vehicle and check out around the dark part has no noises and the texture of the uh, fine here is very satisfying so i just apply this adjustment to the original image it will take a few minutes now the first image is done what i need is right now we do the second image which is decoded by the nikon nx studio so we do the same thing Topaz denoise still on the left hand left eye and we don't do any changes to repeat the last one um, we just apply see the result okay both images are done so we zoom back to 200 percent so we can see more detail on the left that's nikon nx studio decoded you can see the top of the vehicle have some meshy edges and the window profile is not as clear as look at the one on the right hand side you can see the window profile the top of the vehicle line is straight and uh, let's move back to this side a little bit You can see on the dark part acr decoded after denoise you still see very clear texture here in this dark part here all the way here but in the nikon dx decoded 
meshy. It's like a rubber here. Of course, this is what zoom to 200% um, in print. Um, I really doubt it make any differences, but in the digital file, when we zoom in, and you can see the texture um, gradation here from the brightness to the the bright part to the iris to the dark part have a very good gradation, a very clear texture here. But in here, the edge is meshy and not as defined as ACR. So now let's see whether we can make a print out of it. Remember, so far, besides the denoise, we haven't done any adjustment yet. Now we just start to do some simple adjustment to make this printable uh, file. So first I will use the ACR process image because it has a better uh, text quality. And then I just crop into the symmetric composition which I intended to make this image when I took the shot. Just crop a little tighter. The good thing about Z9, like uh, DA50, it has 46 million pixels you can crop from. So the cropability is very good. And now, let's see after crop how big were our images. 44,000, 4,400, sorry, 4,400 pixels. That's enough pixel to make a good 35 to 50 centimeter prints. So we start to do some uh, uh, adjustment. Activate the panel. So first, I would boost up the brightness a little bit. And then, as you can see here, what I really want this image is for the two eyes to pop up. Right now, we have some uh, strong textures here because the low light uh, contrast. So I would just try to minimize visual impact of the texture by pulling a little bit of the level to the image. So that looks fine to me. And then all you need to do is right now select the eyes. And then I'm going to give a little boost on the eyes for the contrast brightness and contrast to let, let the eye pop up a little bit. You can do this in Adobe Camera Raw with the brush, but uh, because we did not changing anything in Adobe Camera Raw, um, just to keep it authentic, so I will do it in the Photoshop. Just give a punch of contrast again, so the eyes start to pop up. And then, I will make the same selection by reselect it again. On the pixel image level, I will do a partial sharpness. Same, just to make the eye pop up. I'm using the 50% with radius 0 0.5 pixel of the smart sharpen. That's the one I use quite often. I do one time, let's do the second time, deselect, and then we zoom in to see. It looks awesome. That's why 100% looks awesome. Now, let's just collapse all the layers. Then we go to what I always use to do the color adjustments, neck collection of the color effects Pro 4. Let's just give this image a little bit warmth, a little bit perceptual saturation. And I will add a little bit polarization just to brighten the eyes of the line. And add a touch of pro contrast called dynamic contrast. It increases the brightness contrast at the same time, increase the color contrast as well. So the eyes really popping up. Okay. All right, let's check this image again. So this is the image. 
at the at the more than 4,000 pixel on longer side, easily to make a 35 to 50 centimeter of print. Again, I just flatten the image, save to as a print image, TIFF. Imagine this is ISO 25,600 images shot with Z9 at such a high SO after simple process, we can make such a professional printing file. And this file, I'll be uploading the internet so everybody can download it and check out and even make a nice little print about, let's say, 35 centimeters to 50 centimeters. So through this short video, I think we can draw a conclusion. Even Adobe Camera Raw right now still only have a preliminary profile for Z9. However, Z9's decoding image quality for high SO performance of Z9 file is excellent. And it is just amazing how Z9's image file at ISO 25600 at the top of its native ISO value still can make professional prints. Follow my YouTube channel for more review of Z9. Thank you. I'm Jeffrey. See you next time.